now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Sunday, July 6, 2025. And we have a lot of things to talk about. Once again, weather related headlines. Red flag warnings, heat advisories continue, especially across areas of the central interior, extending westward out toward the Western Brooks Range, Lisburn Peninsula, and Seward Peninsula. Uh, the good news is at least uh, we are going to start to see this upper level ridge begin to break down and that's going to be followed by a strong cold front that's going to cool down temperatures across especially the northern half of the state as we go through the early and middle part of this week. Rainy and breezy weather systems will be moving across the Gulf and into the Panhandle. We already have one of those happening right now this Sunday afternoon continuing into Monday. There could be a stronger one that brings along uh, some moderate to locally heavy rain, especially into the southern panhandle Thursday into Friday, along with some uh, small craft condition winds, maybe even lower end gale force winds. And also toward the end of the week, Thursday, July 10th, the full buck or thunder moon of July. And looking at the FAA webcam starting way up at Ukiadvik, mostly sunny 42, but as you look out over toward the water, you have this marine fog or low cloudiness and winds they're going to be turning around more to the uh, north this is going to bring in the colder air along with some uh, lower uh, cloud cover and fog with it and eventually maybe even a few light rain snow showers mixed in the interior nanana smoky haze we have a, a fire complex in vicinity that has uh, introduced at times some pretty thick smoke temperature today around 80 degrees as of mid-afternoon and then Coming into the northeastern Gulf Coast and Panhandle, we've had a front bring more rain, rain and fog there at Yakutat, 56 degrees for a cool July afternoon. And then uh, Craig, rain and low clouds, 58. So the lower cloud cover, fog and rain really keeping temperatures down across the southeast. Of main concern, we have the heat advisories in orange that are in effect until 10 p.m. this Sunday evening. Once again, from the Yukon Flats, northwest of the Alaska Range through the lower Tanana, uh, crossing the Yukon River up into the Brooks Range, uh, at least the upward portion of the North Slope and around the Seward Peninsula. We've had high temperatures in the 70s and 80s, a few spots trying to flirt with 90. Yesterday, Huslia had the state's high temperature at 91 degrees. So the heat has reached its peak. The upper level ridge that's been sitting up here the whole holiday weekend is in the process of breaking down. That's good news, but before that happens, a cold front's gonna be pressing southward on Monday afternoon and evening, and it could trigger some scattered thunderstorms here in the central interior from areas around Coldfoot, Gobbler's Knob, westward through Alakaket and Ambler and Huslia. So scattered thunderstorms could initiate new fires Monday afternoon and evening. And here is some of the smoke with the Nanana Ridge Fire Complex that at times requires an escort for people traveling uh, between Fairbanks and they're north of Healy along the George Parks Highway. So this has been not the most convenient time to have that kind of uh, fire interruption, but it's been very active. In fact, so far now we have exceeded for this year's fire season in the state of Alaska, we have burned over a half million acres. And the bulk of that has come here in the last couple of weeks. So we've really ramped up the fire activity. There are 215 active fires with like 28 of them with staff fighting those fires. So uh, a very notable uptick in fire danger. The good news is the weather's gonna start to moderate as it has today, but especially early in the week, the southern half of the state's getting a little cooler temperatures and higher humidity. So that keeps the fire danger down in the south. Gotta get by tomorrow up there across the central interior. And uh, with some thunderstorms, that may be the case that will briefly enhance the fire threat for Monday. Uh, but the northern interior is seeing its last hot and dry day today. Very high to extreme fire danger across those areas this Sunday afternoon and evening. And again, Monday afternoon and evening, maybe not quite as warm or as hot, but then the threat of scattered thunderstorms will make uh, up for the possibility of additional fire starts. 
And overall, as I said, the state is going to see temperatures cool down this week. There will be a higher humidities, some areas of rain or scattered rain showers in the interior and uh, southern mainland. So that should at least temporarily improve some of the fire danger. Here for Monday, we anticipate the grass adjective uh, very high to extreme fire danger, especially Yukon Flats extending westward. Uh, and throw in the spruce adjective, same area. So, so the area here of the Yukon Flats is really primed uh, uh, for extreme fire danger extending westward along and north of the Yukon River, south of the Brooks Range. So that's why we have that red flag warning in effect for Monday into Monday evening. So on the satellite imagery, we've had another push of moisture come up in along the Gulf Coast. There's low pressure here just circulating and it's keeping either areas of rain or rain showers going all along the Gulf Coast. Uh, Homer yesterday had some sunshine, rather pleasant weather. Now they're getting rain showers and that extends all along the Gulf Coast into the Panhandle. There'll be another little impulse ride north, which could enhance some of the rain showers again later Monday into Tuesday. And we look westward, there's a low pressure out here toward the central Aleutians. That energy is going to slide eastward uh, Monday and Tuesday and then way to the northwest. That's the hint of that cold front coming in off the uh, Arctic Ocean. And that's going to bring about a big change to the temperatures there along the Arctic coast, North Slope and Brooks Range. So that front slowly advancing south, southeastward tonight. We have low pressure just sitting here in the Western Gulf with this trough keeping uh, the showers going along the Gulf Coast and into the Panhandle, another little impulse rotating northward. So that could enhance some of the, the, the showers again, especially Southern Panhandle on Monday. The low sliding along and just south of the central Eastern Aleutians Monday afternoon, here we have the low still in the Western Gulf, little impulse coming north. So it's just going to keep the weather unsettled here across the Gulf Coast and Panhandle this week. The cold front beginning to make progress south, crossing the Brooks Range by Monday afternoon and evening. Ahead of it in this region where the red flag warning is, there could be scattered thunderstorms that could induce uh, new fire starts from lightning strikes. And then on Tuesday, the front just kind of stalls out here in the central interior and make some advancement along into north central Canada and down into eastern Russia, but it kind of stalls out right into the central mainland. And then here comes this next piece of energy sliding out of the um, along the Aleutians, and that's going to help spin up an area of low pressure as that translates eastward. There's going to be a low move up into the western Gulf with this front, and this is the front that's going to bring moderate to locally heavier rainfall to the Panhandle Thursday into Friday, especially southern Panhandle could get a little heavier rain, and also this front may be accompanied by at least uh, some small craft conditions and potentially some low and gale force winds. Meanwhile, though, Wednesday we have that front stalled out, and again, along parts of the Brooks Range, higher elevations, uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, we could see either a mix of some rain and snow showers, or in some cases, just some wet snow showers. It'll be cold enough up there uh, as we go Tuesday into Wednesday. So temperatures, Monday morning still could be quite mild. 60 degrees Fort Yukon extending west toward uh, Ambler, but getting down near freezing at Utyadvik. Otherwise, 40s along the west coast near the water, 44 there at Savunga, as well as at St. Paul. Areas of the mainland, south central, south of the Alaska Range at 50 or a bit higher and lower 50s with cloud cover and lingering areas of rain and showers across the Panhandle. Last of the really warm weather, Monday afternoon, squeak out maybe 82 at Bettles, 85 at Fort Yukon. That'll be all she writes, at least for a while. And that may fuel some uh, thunderstorms that have those lightning strikes Monday afternoon and evening. Temperatures probably won't get much out of the 40, low 40s there along the Arctic coast. And by the time we get into Tuesday morning, notice readings get down to a bit below freezing there, Anatovic Pass and along the Beaufort Sea coast. So some of the precipitation here may be in the form of some wet snow. And areas of south central, upper 40s, lower 50s, generally lower 50s across the Panhandle. Still temperatures low mid 50s along the Yukon, Kuskokwim rivers, but a little cooler the outer side, because you're going to have northerly winds through the Bering Strait, 39 below at Savunga Tuesday morning, 45-ish extending from St. Paul down to maybe there, uh, oh, I would say the low end there of the uh, Alaska Peninsula, but then uh, temperatures Tuesday notably cooler in the interior, no 80s or near 90 degree readings 
and we're looking at highs generally in the 60s for Tuesday with some scattered showers as that front will be hung up right here across the central mainland. Behind the front, highs only in the anywhere from mid 30s along the Beaufort Sea coast to maybe low 40s, uh, North Slope Brooks Range. Highs across the panhandle if you get a little break from the showers. Still could be a few lingering showers on Tuesday but maybe getting back up into the lower 60s in some spots. But as I mentioned, another system will be coming in with more rain here for the end of the week. So temperatures, as we take it up uh, through uh, mid-month, July 12th through the 16th, overall the state's forecast is looking like temperatures are going to average uh, below normal, especially over the panhandle, which would imply cloudier skies and occasional bouts of rain. And looking at the precipitation outlook, July 12th through the 16th, that's the case. Maybe slightly above normal precipitation over the eastern half of the mainland to the Alcan border and along the Gulf Coast from the Kenai Peninsula and especially again across the Panhandle. It's trending that could be wetter than normal and then to the west a little drier than normal perhaps along the YK Delta including Nunavik Island here as we approach mid-July.